While most Egyptologists will agree that this is a 3,000-year-old piece of propaganda, there are dissenting voices. Serious doubts are beginning to emerge about the manner of the bus discovery. There are those who would go even further in questioning not only the manner of the discovery, but whether it is in fact ancient at all. One man believes that the Nefertiti bust is a 20th century fake. If you look at the bust, you can see a beautiful Edwardian lady done up in Egyptian makeup. Sean Greenhalsh knows fakery. In 2007, he sold this Armana statue to a UK museum for a six-figure sum. What he didn't reveal was that he'd made it himself. Greenhalsh is a convicted forger. His work has fooled experts all around the world. He sees the hand of a faker all over the Nefertiti bust. It's supposed to be the work of a master sculptor, but the technique says otherwise. For Greenhalsh, what gives the game away is the layer of stucco plaster that covers the limestone core and forms the bust's most intricate features. That's the work of, if not an amateur, then a second or third rate sculptor. And none of those would look for the pharaoh. You'd only have the best. That'd be like finding a, a Michelangelo sculpture in marble. And then you find out that the ears, the eyes, the, old, the hands, the difficult parts are all made in stucco and added on. It just wouldn't be done. And there is another inconsistency. Nefertiti's missing eye. The left socket is empty, while the right eye is made from an inlay of black wax and rock crystal. Greenhalgh believes that the right eye is genuinely ancient, sourced to make the bust look real. It's a major point to its fakery because it's the kind of thing I've done myself, sourcing beads or pearls or whatever for in a piece. Borhard searched the area where the bust was discovered offering a cash reward to anyone who could find the missing eye. It never was found. Greenhalgh believes it never existed. It would be possible to source a quartzite eye, but to find a pair, well, that'd be very long odds. Greenhalgh argues this is the only way to explain the empty socket. To ancient Egyptians, the eyes were a window to the soul. So representing the queen with one eye missing would be a shocking sign of disrespect. Finally, Greenhalgh thinks he knows why the forger picked Nefertiti and the Armana period. If you're gonna pick a period of Egyptian art to fake, the Armana period is really the best because the sculpture wasn't any more difficult than any other period, but it is the most valuable today to collectors and the rarest because it lasted such a short period of time. The damage on it is the major point of it being a, a later copy. It's something I've done myself, I've something I've seen on other fakes. It's quite obvious that you look at where it's damaged. The ears are damaged, it's so obviously it's been dropped left and right sides. The back of the head has been damaged, and most telling, the cobra on the conical cap is almost obliterated to remove it. It would have taken off the nose, the brow ridges, and the chin. There's absolutely no damage to the face. The damage is selective, and that's a dead ringer for a fake. 